Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the first ever episode of Litigation! The only show on YouTube that I think somehow is appropriate to submit for a master's class dealing with copyright law. Our plaintiff for today is Matt Haas... Matt Haas... Zada... Matt Haas, everyone! Matt Haas! Glad to have you on the show. How you doing, buddy? Because of a massive online hate campaign staged against me, I have been on the receiving end of numerous cyber attacks, from harassment to death threats to hacking attempts. Wow, Jesus, I am so sorry, Matt. That sucks. Uh, it says here that you have a YouTube channel with a respectable audience. Let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, one of Matt's videos. Let's just uh, let's put it up on the big screen. Let's see what it looks like. When I first saw you, I got this incredible urge to pin you down and pour a gallon of boiling water down your throat. Nope, not gonna touch that. Not gonna touch that. Okay, uh, moving on to our defendants. Um, Ethan and Ela Klein. Let's give them a hand. Ethan and Ela Klein. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Well, we are being sued, and it's miserable, and, uh, man, I just hate my life, pretty much. Wow. Okay. Everyone loves coming to court now. I've, I've realized that. Everyone loves coming to court. Um, the Kleins also run a YouTube channel. Um, wow. A lot more followers, a podcast, and even a clothing line. Jesus. Uh, let's, let's take a look at one of the Kleins' videos. Mmm. Mm. Oh my god, if I didn't have an A in every other assignment, there's no way I would turn this in. There's no way I would turn this in. Um, let's just get into the details of the case. Announcer! On August 11, 2013, plaintiff Matt Haas uploaded Bold Guy vs. Parkour Girl to YouTube. Like several other videos in the series, it featured a character named The Bold Guy, played by Matt, who pursues an attractive woman, usually after he does parkour. Catch me and I'll let you do whatever you want to me. On February 15th, 2016, the Kleins uploaded another video entitled The Big, The Bold, The Beautiful. This video uses short segments of Haas's original video with longer segments by the Kleins, where they mock the plaintiff's poor performance, unrealistic dialogue, and quasi-pornographic, cringe-worthy plot. Strong shoulders. He wrote that in, by the way. What are the situations? Just remember that whenever a comp anything like that, he wrote that in. He wrote, she says, strong shoulders about me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On April 23rd, 2016, Matt Haas sent a takedown notification to YouTube, who took down the video on the same day. The client submitted a counter notification, challenging the takedown on the basis that the client's video was fair use and non-commercial. Matt filed this lawsuit believing the client's infringed on his copyright. Hmm, I don't know about you guys, but this sounds like a clear-cut case of fair use! That's right. Fair use is a legal defense that protects content creators from copyright liability for criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research. Ooh. Unfortunately for our defendants, Fair use is determined on a case-by-case -case basis using four criteria. Let's go ahead and put them up on the board. The purpose and character of the video. The nature of the original video. The amount and substantiality the new video takes from the original. And finally, the effect the new video has on the market value of the original. Now let's start with the first and potentially most determinate factor of fair use. The purpose and character. This factor discusses whether or not the clients created something new or transformative from Matt Haas's original video. Ethan and Ela, Matt alleges that your video adds nothing new or substantive. What do you have to say about that? Are you serious? Do you really not think that this is substantive? Carrots in the ass, Manny's in the mouth. <laughs> What's with the mayonnaise? I know, she said whatever I want. Well, why are you more confused about the mayonnaise in the mouth and not the carrot in the ass? I don't know why you chose that one. Because, I don't know. Well, the carrot goes in the ass. Like, the man well, maybe, I mean, I just you like just, mayonnaise. You can just eat mayonnaise. That's basically what I'm suggesting. 
Are you seriously telling me that is not substantive? I mean, come on, guys, get real. Vegetables aside, you're absolutely right. Commentary and criticism are classic examples of fair use. Uh, in fact, the court said, as critical as it is, the Klein video is roughly equivalent to the kinds of commentary and criticism of a creative work that might occur in a film studies class. It totally says that, film studies class, all right. I, I'd love to take a look at this. Let's, let's, see what, let's see what we're working with here. How would you like me to shove this up your ass? I'm not into fist but thank you for the offer. I love how he always, he writes their lines always to set him up. Yeah. Like a bazinger. Yeah. It's pretty funny. He also just, the female character is always so annoying. And he writes them like that. Super defensive, super slutty, yeah. super bitchy. But then ultimately they give in to his sexual yeah, prowess. Yeah, because how could you not? The point rightly goes to the clients. Now onto the second criteria, the nature of the original work. Now audience, it's at this point that I have to let you know that copyright law was created to provide specific protections for creative uh, and fictional works. If Matt Haas's videos fit this definition, he will actually receive the benefit of this portion of fair use. The Kleins claim that the bold guy character being focused mainly on Matt Haas's real life makes it non-fictional. Um, Matt, how would you like to respond to that? A lot of the stories you see, believe it or not, and one day we'll go into that, <laughs> a lot of the episodes you see with the bull guy and even Horny Tony are based on real life, okay? No, I'm not saying exact things happen exactly as you see it. Everything's exaggerated for comedic and dramatic purposes, like I've said before. Yes, uh, Matt, um, audience, you may not be aware, but if a woman agrees to have sex with you uh, because you do parkour really well, um, clearly a fictional scenario. Congratulations. Um, on to the next criteria, that is the amount and substantiality of the original video used in the new one. Now, audience, this area of fair use is, just look at the video, dude. Excuse me, Ethan Klein, I'll have to ask you to wait until I've finished explaining the... The video was 14 minutes. We counted it, and the parts that we used Matt's was approximately three minutes. Yeah, it's 11 minutes of us talking, whatever, just us talking, yeah, yeah. and then three minutes of him. Actually, Ethan, you are dead wrong. Um, while the court recognizes that you did use a relatively small amount of Matt Haas's original video in yours, um, copyright law doesn't really work that way. The amount doesn't really matter so much. I mean, like, there's no real amount of time or ratio from original to borrow that you can really hit. Like copyright law isn't that specific. Uh, what really matters is that you took like the heart of Matt's original video and uh, to that extent you, you totally did. You totally did, man. You, you took the heart of his video. However, in order to uh, produce a transformative work of commentary or criticism, you did have to take some elements from the original video, and the court finds that uh, you took an adequate amount. So, um, kind of cancels itself out. Uh, this, one's, this one's pretty much a tie. Now, on to the fourth and final criteria of fair use, the effect the new video has on the market value of the original, ooh. So, this area is not judging so much if the Klein's video uh, hurt the audience for Haas's video. It's more concerned with whether or not the Klein's video serves as a market substitute. Now, uh, to this end, as this is our final area, Matt, is there anything you would like to comment on? I am proud to stand up against massive, misguided opposition to fight for my rights and the rights of artists everywhere. Ethan and Ela. He doesn't like that we made fun of him, 
And so he's suing us. Despite the enemy's propaganda, I don't care about criticism or approval. I can't continue investing so much time and money creating when they're at risk of being stolen by parasites who love to profit off of other people's work. The damages is like nothing. It was a small video and the earnings were extremely low, like in the hundreds. Hey, hey, stop that. We could pay you $4,000, but like, what's the precedent that like anytime we make fun of someone, they could just write us a note from a lawyer and demand $4,000? We stand not only to lose a ton of money, but literally everything yeah. we've built our whole career on. If a thief is downloading content that doesn't belong to them, they deserve every bit of punishment coming their way. I'm, I'm still, still standing here for bold. Okay, um, there's no swaying the court now. I mean, this verdict came down in 2017. Um, you know what? I'll just, I'll just read it to you. Any review of the Klein video leaves no doubt that it constitutes critical commentary of the Haas video. There is also no doubt that the Klein video is decidedly not a market value substitute for the Haas video. For these and other reasons set forth, defendants' use of clips from the Haas video constitutes fair use as a matter of law. Giving the Kleins the fourth and final point and letting them win the game. Okay. Um, okay, so this... Uh, it's not, this isn't really a game show. I mean, this is kind of a metaphor to represent like a costly legal battle that took like a year and a half. There's a lot more nuance to it. I mean, there's even other charges, but like, oh, this is falling apart. The metaphor is falling apart. Um, the clients were not found guilty of copyright infringement of Matt Haas's video. Um, their video was well within fair use and uh, they won the case. Congratulations, Ethan and Ela. Ethan and Ela Klein, the world wants to know, how does it feel knowing that your video is now protected under fair use? Elated. I'm relieved. I'm stoked. I'm happy we took this journey. I'm happy that the opportunity came to us to stand up and set this important precedent for fair use on YouTube. The word is out. Thanks to Matt, fair use is alive and well. That is fantastic. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have here today. I'm Ryan Hunter, signing off.